Hey y'all, this is Cindy, I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you have arrived at the video where we're gonna find out how I'm gonna add 16 spaces to this 100 day project. <laughs> and it's going to be entertaining. If you have another one or a larger one and you don't need this information, you don't have to, but we are going to talk about how to use the Tangle Diva Dance as a reticulum. And uh, I got this idea. This is not my idea. This was Julie Willen's brilliant idea at Zentangle HQ. And if you want to see her video, I am going to do my very best to find the link to that and drop it in the description of this one so that you can link, link directly there. She does, uh, it's part of their Project Pack 5 cartouche series where they are decorating around thing, treasures, basically. Um, things like coins or keychains or pictures and so what Julie does is she used uh, the the um, Tangled Diva Dance as a reticula meaning what that means is she uses the Tangle as a framework around a picture of her dog and then she filled the spaces in that with other Tangles and so I think that's what I'm going to do here with this project so that I can add 16 spaces. Now I'm going to get very dangerous today and actually try to use math again. We know, we know how that goes for me, generally speaking. So um, <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, this is not considered a part of the 100 Days of Zen Tangle, although we are going to use a tangle. This is simply uh, because some people have already decorated the edges of these, and I'm so glad now that I didn't give in to my urge to do that. Um, so, we'll see. But if you don't need this video, you don't need to watch it. That is cool, but I will appreciate you if you do. So, okay. Well, I think I'm going to have to let on that I am sitting reclined in my bed right now. This is because my back pain is seriously bad and I try not to let you guys see that part of it because I feel like it's really unprofessional of me, but it's actually the only way I can manage this without pain. So if you will forgive the blankets over here and the partial leg sticking out on one side, uh, we're going to get along okay. Um, I may put some B video photographs in here of me uh, working one of these days, uh, maybe today. We'll see how ugly those pictures look to me, and then we'll go from there. Um, just, just for fun, in case you're interested. If not, you know, close your eyes, because you may never be the same again. All right. So first, I'm going to use my pencil. This is the um, Stedler Mars Lumograph F pencil. Yeah, I know that's what it is. So blue pencil, black end, F. An F means that the point is has a little bit less graphite than say a 2B. So when you um, uh, use it, you get, uh, you can control your graphite to a little bit better extent. Also, the tip is harder because there's less graphite because graphite is really soft. And so when it's sharpened to a point, you can really use this to get deep into the tooth of the paper, into tiny crevices. So um, this is a recommendation from my teacher and mentor, Annie Oaken. If you'd like an in-depth description of this and why she likes it, I encourage you to check her out at anyoaken.com. Anyoaken.com. I know, I'll stop. Okay, so we have four sides and I need 16 more spaces because we did day 84 yesterday. So, um, looking at this, let's use this top here as an example. Let's set this up a little bit. Um, if I were to divide this into four sections, one, two, three, four. Uh, if I did one and a half, one, uh, two, it's too complicated for me, three, <laughs> four. That's still not going to work um, particularly well uh, for division. So I'm trying to find a way that we can do this a little bit easier. Now, one thing I'm considering here is if we take uh, the four corners out of it, 
then we need three on each side. So what I'm thinking is, and I'm going to use a pencil absolutely to map this out uh, carefully and lightly and almost not there because I do not trust my ability to do this without that ahead of time without really making a mess. So you guys will forgive me. This is not strictly the Zentangle way, but again, it's my way and it works for me and that's okay. If you have something that works for you, I suggest you go for it. So if I take my four corners out of it, then I'm gonna need three additional ones on each side. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how to put a division in here that would encompass the corner and still leave me room for three sections. So what I'm going to try to do is do something where we are coming down in this area. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to draw in what I'm going to do because I do want this to remain fairly zentangly. <laughs> I'm adding words to the Zentangle um, uh, morphology, if that's the correct word, I think it is. So I'm basically going to want to make a section in this area, and that's going to be plenty of room for a tangle, yeah? All right, let's do that on each of these four corners. I'm going to mark out here, and remember, uh, a lot of you guys are going to put these in frames, and although this edge is nice for framing, um, you may want to use like uh, mats around it or something, and so you always want to leave on your art a little bit of a margin uh, for matting, if that's something that you're uh, planning to do, or even if it's not, it's a good idea. Um, that way you have, the eye has a little bit of area there to sort of take it all in. I don't know if that's good advice or not. Some of you guys that are expert designers can let me know. That is not me. I don't have any training in design. I've taken exactly one graphics, graphic arts class. I'm mostly self-taught except for the effect that any Oaken has had. And I'm sorry that I harp about her. It is hard not to talk about somebody that has changed your life in such a significant way. All right, I'll shush. All right, so here's basically where I'm at for this. And I'm not going to probably, I don't know if you can see this, I'm not going to have this um, in this shape. I'm, what I'm going to do with my ink pen is go like this, okay? So I'm just, though, I'm sort of putting the area that I'm going to want to tangle in here, and then I'm going to sort of deep dance around this, you yeah? know? And if you haven't seen Julie's video, uh, it's excellent. That, for me, that was my favorite cartouche video, but I will admit that I never got to the last of them because we had already started this program and my attention span was gone. All right, so I have my four corners with vague little ball-like shapes, right? Because thankfully, I left a nice wide border. I was so smart to do that. Good girl. Okay, now from here to here, I want to divide this space, I want to divide in thirds. So that would be I don't know. I can't add or measure. So over two would be here. And I'm using the the grid lines. Again, you probably can't see them because they're so faint. Let me zoom a little bit. These are the very light grid lines that I used to um, map this map this pattern out in the very beginning video. And if you need to check that out, that is called the materials and prep video in the 100 day uh, project playlist on my channel. Okay, so if I do this one and this two, ah, perfect. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you guys. So this is gonna be my next one, and I'm not gonna be want this to be any further out than this. And uh, two, this is exactly halfway in these squares, but of course, I can't tell you, um, I'm not going to measure them because everyone's patterns uh, has, have taken on a little bit different dimensions depending on the materials that you're using. And that's absolutely okay. We don't, we don't, we're not looking for these to be identical. 
we are looking for you to have something to hang on the wall to be inspired by while you tangle. And that's that was my purpose behind this. So what I did was I put this section halfway. Well, you can use these. Perfect. Okay. You can use your your um, sections on your on your pattern. So halfway on this one, and you skip this one, and halfway on this one. Okay. And then you skip this one, and halfway on this one. Skip that one halfway, so it works out perfectly. Okay. So go to the halfway point on these if they're about the same size as mine, and it should work out. So let's see if it'll work on this side where I have this big mess to distract the eye from here. <laughs> okay, so halfway on this one, skip this one. So we should come down here, and I'm going to want to for this to not go any further up than, say, here. Okay? And so we're going to skip this one, halfway point here. Okay, skip this one, and here we are at the halfway point. No higher than that. And these marks are simply going to guide me when I get my pen out here in a second and start drawing these these um, shapes in, okay? Now, if you're familiar with Diva Dance, and I'm gonna show you uh, a regular Diva Dance here in a second, but if you're familiar with Diva Dance, then you know that you sort of draw a line uh, with some bumps in it, right? So we're basically going to make 16 bumps along the sides of these and uh, draw our patterns in there. Or at least I am. I don't know what y'all are doing. Drop me a comment and tell me, are you having to make a new sheet? Are you following along with me and doing what I'm doing? Uh, did you go for the rectangular one? Did you already decorate your sides? And so now you're wondering what to do? Um, I'll be honest with you. I have three more of these prepped. I have a rectangular one prepped. Uh, okay, skip this one and halfway on this one. Okay, and, oops, skip this one, go up to here, and we're at the halfway. It's going to work perfectly, right? And we'll have nice big sections to play in. And we'll probably have some areas we can embellish in, which is what I wanted with this border anyway. So it's going to work out perfectly. Okay, halfway here, skip this, and halfway through the next section, we draw that. Draw up here, okay, we're at the halfway point, skip this section, halfway here. This is going to make this much easier to figure out, guys. Skip this section, halfway here. So we're there, and I believe that's the whole thing. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to do is a dangerous thing for me, but I'm going to do it, well, actually, I think I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Uh, I will speed this part up for you, but what I'm going to do first is go through and redefine the lines, basically going over them. I'm going to use my 08 for this. A 08 is different from the 01 in the size of this nib. The nib is the point of the pin. It's sort of like a little tiny flat um, uh, felt tip thing but it's a little sturdier than that but you do want to be gentle with them and they're meant to point directly down if you can so that your nib doesn't get worn too quickly on one side so I'm going to use this and go around this outer edge and I'm, I'm going to smooth out these little dips here and make this a smooth line I don't necessarily need it to be bumpy although that might be interesting for me um but to begin with i'm just going to go over this with this this line with the 08 we're going to see how we do okay so just follow along i might ramble i might uh, probably speed this up we'll see what happens <laughs> and if you don't want to listen to me just turn the sound down run it as fast as you want Now, over the last um, 84 days, I have had this in and out of my hands every single day. It has sat out. It has not been preserved in any way. I have not used fixative on it, which I should have done. 
I don't think I want to make those flat. I think I like the little point in there. We'll see how that goes on the other side though. <laughs> I'm just going to take this and even this out. This is dangerous for me because of the shaking. And then I tend to overdo the inking where I feel like it's not good enough. And thereby I make a big mess out of it. So all I'm doing here is emphasizing the original border around the line around each edge of each, the edge of each section. And I should mention that I will probably use my either this 08 or a Microsoft PN to do, whoops, lost my light. To do the rest of these as well. Uh, they have faded over time, which is where I was starting uh, to go with my conversation when I started and got distracted, but it has I have touched it and it has rubbed up against stuff, and so uh, the lines are a little bit frayed. Um, the uh, paper um, rubs on things and, and the lines get um, messed up, and so I did not sweat any of this until now because I knew that would happen and I knew I would want to go over them anyway, so I just didn't worry about it. So this is what I'm going to do all the way around while I try to keep it in frame <laughs> and go in a direction I can do without making a great big jerky mess. I want to thank you guys for all of your nice comments and encouragements and all of that. I have so, so gotten so many new comments that were so nice and so encouraging. I just cannot say enough about y'all. I just got distracted, didn't I? All right, we're going to stop right now. But I am going to do that as we, as we roll on this finishing up. That is going to be one of the things I'm going to do is redefine all of the lines from the original pattern from the original knot pattern, the Celtic knot pattern. You can see I seem to be much steadier today pushing out with my pen. You guys, you may have been told that it is that it you should only pull in towards yourself. I am here to tell you that does not always work best for me. You should practice either way feels comfortable to you and if pushing out is works better for you that's okay that's just a rule of thumb anyway it is a best practice but it's not it's not you know it's not a hanging offense guys and I will tell you again there is nothing in the Zentangle method that has to do with rules really they are just you know the way that they do things the way they have learned is really effective and their goal is the Zentangle goal is meditative drawing not we're the best at drawing you know it's about relaxing and while you're relaxing creating something beautiful and how lovely a gift is that guys it's lovely it's not about the patterns. That's why they don't they don't mind sharing the patterns freely. They've always been free. You can't copyright a pattern because they existed in nature long before we decided to what's called deconstruct them. And we are though the patterns are not invented by the pattern creators. They are deconstructed by them. So people don't really invent patterns. Chances are that pattern already exists somewhere and chances are you've already seen it. There are patterns everywhere in nature. Everywhere in nature. Look at leaves or sand or, I mean, 
trees or in the disorder there is still a lot of order so um, you know just relax into it the thing that has made Zentangle so the Zentangle method so pivotal for me is that it accepted me with my weaknesses it it allowed me to be who I was with my what I saw as my flaws and it made it possible for me to flow and experiment and you know drawing I'm one of those people like probably a whole lot of you guys who always wanted to draw and when you came to Zentangle you found a way to draw that worked for you and I understand now why Zentangle works for so many people it's like you know the very first thing that most people struggle with when they when they get a piece of paper out is now what do I do right what am I, what am I gonna draw what you know what's it what is it gonna look like what should I start with it's very very inhibiting at least it was for me I never knew what to draw in Zentangle they take that worry away by using strings and patterns right and the strings are the strings are ways to divide that big blank space up so that it's not so intimidating. And you know, a lot of you may not be intimidated by that, but I will admit oops, I will admit that that was absolutely something that bothered me. Now, <laughs> I knew I was going to get to this corner eventually. You know what? I am going to own this. No, maybe I'm not. I'm going to redefine this line on the downside. And that is going to take a little bit of the long, wide look off of this, if you'll see. It's not quite so dramatic there. The other thing I may do, and I'm not promising because this may not work here, but I may, if I can get my jelly roll work, I may draw a small white line on the inside of this to sort of mimic this for separation, and that may also help that look more similar to the others. So I don't know yet, but I think I'm going to leave this right now as is. And honestly, depending on the pattern we put in here, it may make no difference at all. Because I can choose to put a pattern in there that may have a lot of inking, and it may blend right in. So we'll see. So never assume that what you feel are mistakes. And yes, I felt that what was a mistake, and I still do. But that doesn't mean you can't work around it or use it in some other way. And a lot of times, if you can repeat a mistake, then you have something new on your hands. That is something I'm trying to learn myself. I don't know if I can, but we'll see. Hmm. Okay. I feel a little bit better about this. But you can see how washed out these lines have gotten over the last couple of months. And so this redefining thing is probably something you're going to want to do uh, whether you're doing the outer edges or not. But you judge if you feel like you're, you, or if you have done a really good job preserving yours. <laughs> good job. I am proud of you. I will seek to emulate you guys and do a better job myself. That's my $10 word for today, emulate. It's not really a $10 word, is it? It's about buck 50. Mm -hmm. All right. And you see, you can see this really does make a nice difference. Simba says hi to Karma. 
He is feeling very frisky today. Honey, do you think you could shut the back door for me so he won't bark as much? I thought I left it open. Well, I'm pretty sure I did. In fact, I'm pretty sure I told you I was doing it when I came back in. And you were in your room. Thank you, honey. Well, I don't know about the kid, but I'm doing a lot better this week. Thank you, my darling. Oh, you're right. Now that you closed it, it isn't open. My little smart man. <laughs> he is the smartest kid I've ever known. Well, at least the most manipulative and cute. Definitely cute. But that doesn't work on me. <laughs> Sometimes it does. Only when I want it to. And this is why this is dangerous for me, because I tend to get uh, crazy with this. Don't hurry this if you're going to do it. Uh, take your time. Do a good job. Be careful. Okay. This is a time when you can sort of fix some edges if you need to. Of course, with me, I need to fix my fixes frequently, so be careful. And if you have to fix a fix, that's okay too. And I want you to remember something. If you see a mistake, you're a lot more likely to notice it than anyone else. So don't sweat the small stuff, kids. That That is a message. That is a message from my boy Sean that I lost a couple of years back. He was so smart about this stuff. He all, in fact, he was my little voice in my head that used to tell me, Cindy, don't sweat the small stuff. This is small stuff. So if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. Chill out. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> Mari says, always sweat the small stuff. Oh, that looks much nicer. Something about nice, crisp black lines. Just make me happy. And I, again, I will be redoing the ones in the middle of the pattern, but this is my first step for working outside. Okay, so I've done this all the way around. Even my little mess, and from me to you, I think that already looks less of a hump than it did just by doing that little bit. Okay, so here's where we are now. And forgive me, I'm going to use uh, the side of our uh, Michelle Beecham called, not buds, but something else. I don't remember. I'll think of it. Anyway, don't get distracted, Cindy. Okay, so Diva Dance. I'm going to use this double line for the example. Diva Dance goes like this. You draw an aura. This is not the, a good pin for this small work, okay? You draw an aura over an existing line. And on that aura, in different spaces, you're going to make these little hills and black them in. Yeah? And then you're going to aura that. So your R is gonna look fun. Yeah. Then you're gonna add some more little little black hills. 
just wherever you want to. They can be separate or together with the ones you've already done. Just wherever you feel like you should have one. Let your creativity guide you. Then you're going to follow that with an aura. So that is basically Diva Dance. This is a great fill pattern. It's lots of fun to do and you can't get it wrong. Yeah? So that's what I'm going to do sort of here and where these where these blacked in spaces are, that's where I'm going to put my patterns. Yeah? So what I'm going to do is make an aura around the edge of this. And then I'm going to add my little humps. Okay? And then I'm going to try to leave enough room around that to aura it again. And that should be sufficient for what we're going to do. All right. So let's start with the aura. All right, so that's as far out as we get. <laughs> but I like this. This really gives it a nice finished edge. So now my goal is going to be adding in, and I think I'm going to do the side bumps first and then hit the corners because I think I'll know better what I'm doing by then. So I think I wanna start Right. Which way I think I want to start on this side because I can control things better that way. So here are my divisions. Right here and right here. And I don't want to go past here. So what I think what I'm going to do... Is hit it like that. What do you think? Well, I didn't mean to touch that line, but I guess we can. All right, let me get some more zero eights. This one's kind of giving out on me. I need a juicy pin for this work. All right, so I'm going to repeat this all the way around. Going out. Like that. Not the best clothes, but I'll probably um, redefine that too <laughs> when we're done. So let's do one more right to here. And here's our top. That one will be a bit smallish. But so this is what I have sort of a scalloped edge all the way around. So three in the middle on each side. And this is why I did the middle parts first because I felt like that was really gonna help us figure out what to do with the corners when we get there. Oops, sorry. So let's do this one now. I think if you start with the one in the middle and work from there, the spacing is going to work out. No, Cindy, leave it alone. You'll just make it worse. Oh my goodness. So you can see it's not a big space, but we will definitely have 16 decent sized places for patterns. I like it. It's going to work. 
it's so rare that <laughs> that works out for me. So, And if you'll notice, when we're doing this, we're going to put another pattern right here. This is going to be so insignificant to the whole coolness of the thing, we're not even going to notice it. At least I'm deciding I'm not going to notice it. Okay, let's, let's think creatively on the corner. I'm going to, I'm going to probably regret it. And I'm going to live dangerously because we have been doing that all along. And so far it's been okay. I'm going to do that number in the corner. I have my, whoops have my circles already drawn in or my sections already drawn in so I am just going to pull that up to a cute point see how well that worked out oh my gosh sometimes things do work out that's awesome all right I think I'm on to something here Let's do the next corner, just like that, because I like it. Okay, that one was not as good. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how this goes. I'm laughing. That is so something I would do. There we go. So, note to self, don't draw from that position. You'll be fine. Much nicer. What are we going to do with this mess? <laughs> we're going to love it the way it is. That's what we're going to do. This is going to be great. I have solved my issue. The only thing I'm going to do further to this is draw an inner aura along the insides with a smaller pen, probably with my zero one. Although I may go back over those and do it with a pen. I don't know. Uh, the pen. I'm still talking about a micron um, pen. The pen is a plastic nib pen instead of this metal tip. It has a little bit more um, support for the nib, uh, and it's also a little bit larger size. Okay, so all I'm going to do here, I knew I couldn't leave it alone, is draw an inner aura like this all the way around. I just have a smoother stroke out sometimes. I'm sort of I sort of lose control of my pen stroke somewhere in there. When the strokes are too long, the further I go past my comfort point, harder it is. And it's so hard to get a seamless transition when you pick up your pen. Now I have seen uh, Rick Roberts, co-founder of the Fentangle Method, put his pen down and turn his paper while the pen was still down. But I think if I did that I would end up with a big ink puddle. So <laughs> I don't know. Let's see.
And now we have a nice, perfect section for the next 16 tangles. Now, if you have problems like I do with your lines um, uh, overlapping correctly, a tip for you is to lighten the pressure on your pin as you come to the end of your stroke. And as you bring in the other one to meet up with it, and then you can sort of get them together. And even if there's a little, you know, white break in there, slight break in there, it's, it's still better than having overlapping lines that are ugly, at least for me. If you guys don't mind your lines, then I don't mind them either. Again, this art form is not about competition with other artists. It is not about being better than anyone else. It is about relaxation and meditation, enjoyment and beauty and all of those great things that are so warm and nurturing. I'm in my way again, aren't I? This thing is a hard angle to get. And I'm going to cover up the camera, or the cover up the light if I do it this way, but we'll do it real quick. Okay. All right, now. Should be able to work with this. And I will probably take an eraser and just lightly take out the extra pencil lines. But I will tell you this, I'm sure glad I left my pencil lines in from the very beginning because I have needed them. And now these are not perfect. They're a little bit irregular. They're all approximately the same size. But they don't have to be. They don't have to be perfect. This is still going to look extremely cool when we're done. Well, <laughs> it's typical for me, isn't it? And that's okay, guys. It's all right if your wine lines are wobbly. I am hearing from you guys in comments that a lot of you have this struggle. So maybe it helps you guys to know that you're not the only ones without perfect lines. And you know what? I still come up with some pretty decent stuff sometimes, so... I will never be my friend Annika at Zenlinia. You guys have probably seen her art. If you haven't, she has a YouTube channel here. You can check her out. Or on Facebook and Instagram. It's uh, Z-E-N dot L-I-N-E-A. Zenlinia. And she's one of the most amazing artists I have ever known. She has an ability with lines and color and smoothness that I just... I would love to emulate, but I have to find my own way to make myself happy. And comparing myself to her is pointless. It's, it's pointless. We have learned to appreciate each other's art. Well, I appreciate hers. I don't know if she appreciates mine, but I know she likes me, so that's okay. Whoops. Anyway, you guys should check her out, Zenlinia. She is amazing. She's from Croatia and uh, was in my CZT class, CZT32. 
All right, guys, I think I'm going to start he stop here. It's not quite diva dance at all. Uh, I intended to do this a little bit differently, but I like how it turned out. So I'll see you tomorrow for day 85.